Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Hidden Gems of Cinema. I'm your host, Jordan Ross, and today, in honor of Labor Day, I'm talking about the 1954 working class drama, Salt of the Earth. This film follows Mexican workers at a zinc mine that call a strike, and through their solidarity, as well as the resolve of their wives, mothers, and daughters, eventually they're able to accomplish their goal and receive better working conditions. Now, this film was shot right at the height of the Red Scare, when a lot of artists in Hollywood were being blacklisted for suspected ties to the Communist Party. And this film was made by three of those blacklisted artists. The director, Herbert J. Biberman, the writer, Michael Wilson, and the producer, producer Paul Jericho. This film was made as a clear socialist statement, and with the understanding that it would be condemned and boycotted. And that's exactly what happened. In fact, it was investigated by the FBI for potential ties to the Kremlin, and it was shut out of all but 12 movie theaters in the entire country. However, over the years, it's gained somewhat of a cult following. And whatever your political status is, this is undeniably a passionate and progressive work of art. One thing I loved about this movie is that most of the cast was made up of non-actors, and a lot of them were actually involved with the real-life strike that this movie was based on. And I also love the progressiveness of putting women front and center of this film, rather than focusing on the men that are the ones that called the strike. At last, a film in which women emerge as the heroic equals of men. And men learn about sex equality the hard way. In fact, the main character in this was played by Rosala Revueltas, who was an accomplished Mexican actress, and this was her U.S. film debut. However, after this film, she was deported back to Mexico and labeled a communist, which is really a shame because she was a really talented actress, and I can only imagine what she would have been able to accomplish had she been allowed to stay in the U.S. and continue working in Hollywood. you got to get equality on the job. Then we'll work on these other things. Give it to the men. I see. The men. Your strike may be for your demands. But what wives want, that comes later. Always later. Now, don't you start talking against the union again. But yeah, a few more fun facts about this movie. I mentioned earlier how this film was boycotted and condemned, but during production, they met a lot of obstacles as well. When they were about to begin production in New Mexico, the Citizens Committee ordered them to leave town or they would be leaving town in black boxes. So they were getting death threats over a movie. Also, the producers were worried that someone would try to destroy or sabotage the actual film reels, so they had to deliver the film in unmarked canisters at night and in secret to a sympathetic lab technician. So it's kind of a miracle that this movie was ever made in the first place. Also, this film was released in China in 1960, which is pretty significant because it was the only American film to be released in China from 1950 to 1979. But it makes sense since it was made with a strong communist message. From coast to coast, the critics rave. One of the most dramatic and entertaining films of all time. You'll laugh and cheer. You'll thrill with pride. Your kids will love it. See Salt of the Earth. You'll never forget it. Salt of the Earth. But, again, politics aside, it's a highly dramatic and emotionally charged film that deserves to be seen. It's not only a significant piece of cinematic history, but it's a significant piece of our country's history as well. As one critic said, this is an extraordinary film made under extraordinary conditions based on extraordinary real-life events. It may be kind of difficult to find, but if you do some digging online, I'm sure you'll be able to find a copy somewhere. Anyway, check this out and let me know what you think. Also, if you can think of any other underrated, underseen, or underappreciated films throughout history, then let me know in the comments section, and maybe I'll pick that movie for a future episode of Hidden Gems of Cinema. Anyway, thanks again for watching this episode. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on all of my social media accounts, which you can find in the description section below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I'm your host, Jordan Ross.